welcome all. Uh, today I have some joyous news for everyone. Well, not for everyone, but okay, for a lot of people, I guess. So, due to popular demand on Udemy, I have uh, for me uh, for Mac for Mac instructions and for tutorials on a Mac, I have decided to actually acquire a MacBook Pro and do the demonstrations on it. Uh, the setup instructions on how to install VirtualBox, how to do a pass-through, and pretty much anything else that you might ask of me to do. I will be happy to do it if I can. And also, for some of the problems that people have been experiencing on a Mac, now you can. Now I can relate to you, now you can write to me, and I can attempt to recreate the problems and find the solutions. But before I actually begin with the tutorial itself, I would like to share a few. Ex I, I would like to share my experience thus far with a Mac. This is something I really feel that I need to do. First of all, the price. Uh, when I saw what the prices were for Macs, that was pretty detrimental and demoralizing, with me going around and looking for Mac for a used Mac. But oh well, I guess I, I guess it needed to be done. So here it is. What I've acquired to purchase is a MacBook Pro from late 2011 with a 2.4 gigahertz i7 quad core processor and with 4 gigabytes of RAM and with a dedicated AMD graphics card. So I have replaced the RAM, I have went to the official Mac service uh, here and I, I've asked them about the RAM and Mac and they basically said that I could either insert one 8 gigabyte uh, slot and that would work in conjunction with my 2 gigabyte slot which was on a lower frequency but then both of them would work on a lower frequency or I could insert two of them. Upon realizing what the price was for two, I promptly instructed him to, ins to insert only one into this Mac, as I don't really need more than 10 gigabytes of RAM, however the frequency is a bit lower. Anyway, that is the hardware that I have so that you know what I'm working with, so that you can, uh, so that, so that you can compare it to your own and understand my limitations if there are any, and I also have the latest update of Yosemite installed here and I have created a dedicated account for Udemy as you can see in the upper right corner it says Udemy. I have I have not installed anything on this account uh, with this account so this is as it gets this is stock and I will go through the install and now I will go through some of the tutorials and show you how to install VirtualBox, Kali and uh, pass through, set up a pass through. I mean, things are fairly the same, if not exactly the same. But some people have been experiencing some problems. I have not done anything on this Mac. I have not done any additional installations or anything like that. So I want to see if I will encounter the same problems while instructing you. And let's see how if I am able to resolve them quickly. If I am able to resolve them quickly, I'll leave it in the tutorial. If I'm not, I'll cut out the long parts and see what I can do. Anyway, my experience thus far with Yosemite, well, I am not too thrilled with it, not too enthusiastic. I mean, the design is nice, both the, la the MacBook Pro design is very nice and the layout of the operating system is very nice, but it doesn't have the amount of customizability and it doesn't have the amount of options that I have with Fedora, really. I don't have the same amount of freedom, but it is true what they say, things just tend to work with Mac, there are no problems of whatsoever. Uh, it runs smoothly, the battery is great and all that, but I just don't have the same features that I have in Linux, even though the terminal commands are fairly, this, are fairly similar, I don't have the same amount of freedom to mess around with my system as I do have in Linux, so that's, that's one of the reasons why I didn't enjoy my experience with, with a Mac that much, but I mean it's okay, it's fine. This is a perfectly legit operating system. I would, uh, I would, def I would definitely be able to use it, and it. I do, I do not think that it would be a bad experience. Contrary, I believe that it would be a fantastic experience. But I am not switching from Linux, like no way. Anyway. So let's go ahead and begin with the basics. The first thing that you need to do if you are a Mac user uh, to follow through this tutorial, you will need to 
install a virtual machine of Kali Linux or create a dual boot. Uh, today I am going to demonstrate how to or do a dual boot with Kali, but a dual boot with Kali I wouldn't really recommend because there isn't that much point to it. It's a lot easier to install a virtual box as most of the wireless cards in Macs won't really be good for packet injection anyway. Uh, well, you might ask me, well, what is the difference? Can't we do packet injection with VirtualBox and stuff with, through a virtual machine with VirtualBox? No, you cannot do that, because if we install a virtual machine, that virtual machine does not have access to your integrated wireless card. The only thing that you can do is pass a USB wireless adapter to that virtual machine and then do the packet injection. This, I do believe that I shall demonstrate as well. Uh, a workaround for this on most laptops, including MacBooks, is simply to create a dual boot and then or a live boot, and then a live boot is basically to create a USB of Kali. Uh, there is a tutorial. There is a separate tutorial for that. But uh, those two options remain, and then you can access your hardware directly. But then again, there is no point in doing that if your wireless card is, does not support packet injection or is simply not good for it. So I would advise you to get a wireless adapter and if you still want to attempt a dual boot or a live version, I mean by all means feel free to do so and I really 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 hope that it does work out. But in this tutorial I will show you how to install VirtualBox. Also by the way if you have any other requests what you would like me to demonstrate on a Mac feel free to ask it of me but I'm only willing to go in terms of configuration if you want the stuff from the course that I do in Linux and you want to do the same things on a Mac I, I that's not a good idea let me just leave it at that and let's go ahead and begin with this already because I'm looking at my timer I've been babbling for about seven minutes yeah okay so let's open up, I'm going to open up a default web browser. I'm not going to install Firefox or anything like that. With my main user, I have installed Firefox so I can use it. But as I said, this is, uh, I'm running this at stock. I'm, I'm n I have no intention of changing uh, the default installation. So let's go ahead and first open up a VirtualBox website. So let's go ahead and perform the search. Type in VirtualBox and search for it. Okay, so got https virtualbox.org okay so here we go so check if it's secured so far as using encrypted connection digital certificates keep information private to send show the certificates fight sign virtual box issued by very sign okay so there are the ones I know that there are the ones issuing the certificate for this site so that's fine Go ahead and check the certificate anyway, and make sure that it's uh, it's HTTPS just in case, because people tend to put fake webs websites quite a good amount of time, and then go into downloads, and from the downloads you can see. Oh, I didn't configure this bar down the road. Okay, so let's go ahead and configure this bar. I'm sorry, this is just going to take a minute. The dock. I'm sure that pretty much all the Mac users know how to do this. Hide it. Thank you. And let's expand this. By the way, I really like this feature with a Mac that you can slide left and right with three fingers. Anyway, let's go ahead and select the OS X version of VirtualBox. So we got VirtualBox for Windows hosts, OS X hosts. Let's go ahead and select that one. The download is proceeding and it's going it's going it's going pretty fast for me anyway or so I like to think I don't have the fastest internet connection out there it's 80 megabytes down and 10 megabyte 10 megabits up 80 megabits down and 10 megabits up but it does serve its purpose okay so let's go ahead and open up this file Let it run, let it run. No big deal, shouldn't take too long. Checking volumes, finishing. Thank you. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and begin with the installation. This is the first time I'm actually installing something in a Mac, so this I've done this deliberately. I did not want to do this installation prior to this, so that I can put myself into somebody's shoes and that I would encounter the same exact problems that you yourselves would encounter. I'm hoping that I will encounter them to an extent anyway. Okay, so double click, run the application. Let's go ahead and see what it says. Double click on this icon. Okay, never mind that. Run the VirtualBox application. Let's see, will this work? No? Yes? Excellent. Okay, so I'm lying in my user installation. I did install Firefox, so that's something. But I did not install VirtualBox prior to this. And let's go ahead and open up applications. And where do you suppose it is? Ah, uh, VirtualBox. Ah, there we go. So VirtualBox package. The package will run program to determine if the software can be installed. Okay. Introduction. Thank you for the introduction. Change install location. What is the default install location? Install only for me. Uh, why doesn't it give this option? I don't get it. Maybe it's stuck or something. No, it's definitely not stuck, but it seems to be... Ah, I see, I see. No, yes. Okay, that's just a certificate. Install for all users on this computer. So I do not know how to change this. It apparently I don't have the ability to change it. Continue. Change install okay. customize. Let's see what this does. Okay, so the command line tools. Uh maybe I shall use them. The utilities. Not a bad idea. Virtual box, kernel extensions. Okay, so it seems to have everything pre-packaged here. That is very nice. I could actually disable one package, but it doesn't allow me to go ahead and destroy the kernel extensions. But okay, I mean, they're needed for it to work. And... But what I am bothered with the most, I'm sure that somebody's looking at me with pretty... and saying, wow, what a stupid person you are. You can't even change the location, the destination. But yeah, I suppose it it has to install for everybody. That seems a bit strange, doesn't it? Oh well, not a big, not really a big deal. I, to be honest, I kind of need VirtualBox on my other users as well. So let's go ahead and. On my main user, I need a virtual box as well. I was meaning to install it anyway. So let's go ahead and skip that shameful part and the instructor that knows nothing. Okay, so it's requesting me that I confirm this with a password. So let's go ahead and type it in. There we go. The strange thing for me coming to a Mac is that I can't, I mean, there, there's like the homebrew that I can, the packet manager that I can install for uh, OS X, but it is very annoying to actually have to install that to not have a uh, package manager by default. Okay, so I have 30 minutes remaining. Hopefully we can finish it as I am running short, as I only have like six more minutes of the tutorial due to the limitations on Udemy. So that is the that is the installation procedure for VirtualBox. It seems to be installed now. Let's go ahead and uh, run it. And I probably don't need this anymore. Uh, is this how you delete things? No, that's how you remove them from the dock. Oh well, I'll just use the the file manager to remove it. Can I use the file manager to remove it? Don't need this. Close this. Excellent. So there we go. And let's go into the applications and move the trash. 
now we're gonna go ahead and start VirtualBox. I don't have an SSD in this, so keep that in mind. The one, the version with an SSD was kinda expensive, but I, I might, I might decide to upgrade later on if it's worth the while. Probably is in terms of speed, but then again, I don't use this laptop for much other than the web browsing. And let's go ahead and now that we have this set up, now we're gonna go ahead and basically just download Kali and in the next tutorial we're going to install it. So go to Safari and then type in just Kali. Should pop up the right one. HTTPS change to English. Thank you. So there we go. The first one is Kali Linux penetration testing HTTPS. We're gonna go into downloads and keep in mind that you can either download a Kali 2.0 image from here uh, in different sections of the instructions. I use different versions. I have updated certain sections of the tutorial which are considered to be vital. But as the uh, at the t when you watch this, if there is a newer version of Kali, just go ahead and download it. Should be fine, no problems. So you can either download uh, this one, the ISO file from here, or you can go ahead and Oh, what did I do? Ah, uh, come on, where is it? There we go. So you can either download the ISO file from here, this one, or you can go down below and select officially uh, ARM and VMware images for virtual machines. So you have pre-built Kali Linux uh, VMware images and you have pre-built Kali Linux virtual box images so you can use these as well keep that in mind okay so just down uh, for the time being I would like you to just go ahead and download this pre-built version so it says Kali Linux 64-bit virtual box and we're just gonna go ahead and click uh, does do I have any torrent clients installed here are you serious I do no this is just the image. This is just a file that starts the download. Any chance I have it installed? Of course not. Okay, so let's just go ahead and click on the image and download it. So the download is proceeding, so by the time I come back in the next tutorial, the download will finish and I will be able to show you how you can install it and then we can go into USB pass-through on a Mac. Anyway, until then, I bid you farewell and I sincerely hope that you are all pleased with this.